Hello everyone, this is Anush Kumar from Red Fashion Law Journal and Legal Design Media Insight. And today, as you can see on the slide, our topic is Guide to Fashion Law. And I'll be discussing about fashion law, about this field, how to make career in it, what are the legal issues in this industry. So let's uh, get to have a look over the session's highlight. So today, I'll be talking about the overview of fashion industry and who are the stakeholders in it, understanding the field of fashion law, work profile of a fashion lawyer, adding required skill, starting a career in fashion law and academic options. Apart from that, we'll be taking some more uh, topics and some more questions that we have received in the registration box. So let's get started. So fashion law, for whom? So as you can see, like it is for fashion professional stakeholders. Stakeholders means the workers or the workforce who are working in the field of fashion, like who have a stake over it, which directly or indirectly affect this industry or like this industry has an impact on them. Then we have students, the students also the fashion students and the law student, and also the business st students. And yes, of course, lawyers. That's why we are attending this session, right? So uh, firstly, like before going into the much detail about the field of fashion law, let's understand what is fashion and what is the industry landscape of it. So if we have a look over the, some of the quotations, like Coco Chanel. So uh, like fashion is not something that exists in dresses only. Fashion is in the sky, in the street. Fashion has to do with these ideas, the way we live, what is happening. So this is fashion. Fashion is a form of ugliness so intolerable that we have to alter it every six months. So we can conclude that fashion is also a form of art or expression. And uh, it also then again changes with the time. It also again then changes with the geographical conditions and the countries and also with the time. Yes, And like something that is maybe uh, like out of fashion for India, maybe an updated uh, like fashion for someone else, or maybe like we are adopting some other countries' culture, and that may be a new trend in it, right? So like we are adopting the Western culture, so that is something uh, can be a new for us. Like, but that is already outdated in the other countries, right? So like fashion also changes with the time. Fashion also changes with the people, with the culture, with the countries, with the geographical conditions. So this is fashion. So now landscape. Why fashion industry is important? Like firstly, the main uh, thing, like uh, let's talk about the uh, like contribution of fashion industry. So if we talk about the employment rate, so like after agriculture, it is the only uh, field that has generated uh, like more than 30 to 25 percent of employment. And then again, it is a broad field, not only limited to the clothing. It also includes cosmetic. It also includes other sectors. Also, it also includes the textile, right? It also includes uh, the fashion weeks, the fashion shows, celebrities now influencer also now these days. So this industry is very important. It has a direct contribution to the GDP of countries and world economies. So if we talk about India, like nearly 2.5% of GDP comes from the fashion industry. So fashion is like, it has a also a significance in the economy also. So this is why fashion industry is important. And now you can see how many people are working in this industry. So of course they will have a legal issues and that's why fashion law is there, right? So now there are some myths also about fashion law. So like common myths are like these two are the common myths that fashion law is only about the IP, the intellectual properties, the copyright design of for the designers or the brand owners. Second uh, myth is fashion law is about business of fashion only. So it only like talks about the business of fashion, the fashion brands, only celebrities. But by the end of this session, you will get to know like, what really is fashion law. What are the legal issues in this industry? So let's uh, get started for our next thing. So like I'm leaving this question for you. Is fashion law for you? And by the end of this session, you will have answer for this. So is this feel right for you? Like you may have some uh, like uh, we can say some of the inspiration from various websites or the resources about the fashion law, right? This field is about IP or this field is about the contracts and agreement. But is this field for you? Are you, uh, is this the field that you want to take up as your uh, like career opportunities or for career aspirations? Do you want to become a fashion lawyer or do you want to become a fashion business consultant? And if you are a fashion designer or a fashion professional, are uh, fashion law directly or indirectly affecting you also? And do you need to also learn about the fashion laws? So yes, let's start it. Now, before understanding about the issues of this industry, let us understand uh, like who are the stakeholders, like for whom the fashion law is required. 
yes so every law is uh, like uh, uh, enacted and drafted for their stakeholders right like the family laws for the family issues right so now we have uh, these are the stakeholders you can see in the slide so firstly the main thing is workforce like the workers engaged in fashion industry they may be artisans they may be the manufacturing in unit uh, like the workers working in the supply chain logistic stores fashion shows fashion weeks fashion businesses of course fashion brand owners fashion designers fashion models fashion photographers bloggers celebrity endorsement is there now instagram influencers are also there so various type of influencer are also there movie industry of course movie industry directly related to the uh, to the fashion industries for their endorsement for their licensing logistic shopping malls and retail stores and consumers so like the legal issues will uh, revolve around these stakeholders only so actually these are the your target audience like you have to serve them so if you are want to become fashion lawyer so these will be your target audience these will be your clientele and you have to sort out the legal issues now let's take an example of a fashion brand for example you want to start a fashion brand so these will be the a, a basic checklist so now you can understand what the importance of fashion lawyer in this checklist like firstly if you want to, like for example uh, now put yourself in the shoe of a fashion brand owner so for example you are starting a fashion brand so what you need to do firstly you will do a brand planning right you will do with a competitor market analysis then you will come up with a business plan then you will understand what the compliance is like what are the laws related to you uh, your industry like your product line various product line will have a different compliances like for example for a cosmetic for a jewelry or for a uh, shoe line so there will be different compliances right now ip protection very important supply chain processes and then we have contract agreement market and promotion and then we have sales ip monetization international trade so this is a fashion brand checklist now let us understand in detail about uh, the work profile of a fashion lawyer so as you can see uh, there is a uh, like we can see the work profile is divided into three part right so these are pre issues like brand uh, brand setup like we have seen uh, this area like you can see the left side brand planning competitor market analysis business plan compliance and ip protection so this is your pre stage right also like your supply chain process may come in middle like you can see the workforce issues can be there it may happen like the pre sale also right and then we have post sale uh, issues are also there so now let us understand in detail about the work profile of a fashion lawyer yes so now you can see work profile of a fashion lawyer if you want you can take a screenshot of, of this also so like this is a uh, as you can see these, there are various step so for example you want to start a any fashion brand so you will have to go through these steps firstly you need a lawyer a fashion lawyer for your brand setup for helping you adopt uh, the business plan company registration trade license local level compliances ip registration and then taxation like gst and other thing and then real estate leasing agreement also because we have seen in the covid time so there were forced merger clauses was there because the uh, shopping stores were shut down now supply chain so let me make it uh, very easy for you to understand what the supply chain so supply chain means a complete process from a raw material to end user product so that is a supply chain and then there will be legal issues between these uh, like processes so as you can see this is supply chain so firstly you have to procure a material if you are a brand owner and then uh, you have uh, there will be manufacturing assembling of those raw material then labeling then packaging and then delivery of the goods to the customer now let us understand about the requirement of contracts and agreement over here now you can understand about like these are the agreements relating to these processes sales supply agreement manufacturing agreement is there then licensing agreement is there and then in the last two part you can see logistic distribution agreement are there so it means like you have to draft this agreement also as a fashion lawyer 
or if you are a fashion brand owner you need to have these agreement with you so now i am not discussing anything about the ip or i am just discussing about the contractual agreement part right now let us come back to the work profile of fashion lawyer so brand setup now you know where you will be needing uh, the help of fashion lawyer supply chain now you know and then negotiation negotiation mean all the drafting work all the contractual agreement work is there like sales purchase licensing merchandising franchising franchising mean like if you if you have your already business started and you are doing good at your one place and you want to expand your brand then you can come up with a franchise plan and you can expand your brand and then we have licensing like for example spider man movie is there in the cinemas so they they can do an uh, licensing agreement with puma or any other companies and they can come up with a merchandise right because they have a good will they because they have a popularity and they can come up with the uh, maybe they can do a tie with puma for polo t-shirts having a spider man logo over there so that is called merchandising and then like for also then again you have seen uh, like happy meal boxes at the mcdonald store and then we have uh, other issues like we have other legal issues like in distribution is there uh, the seller agreement are there then employment agreement are there then e-commerce very important so now e-commerce also you have op two options like whether you are starting your own e-commerce website then again you need to have privacy policy sales policy refund policy exchange policy drafted for you and also data privacy policy very important if you come from the uh, like european country then gdpr will be there and maybe you your country will have uh, will also your own data protection law yeah so then uh, like these agreements are very important and then in businesses also business mean this is the uh, the uh, we can say this is the process where you are actually making uh, gearing up for making sales like firstly you will be hiring a workforce so then again employment agreements are very important in this industry because whosoever will be working in your industry in your workplace will have access to your ip also like you will be designing like you will have your design there so might be possible they can take a photograph and they can sell it to your competitor or they can leak your design so then you need to enter uh, like ip clause in their employment agreement also ip monetization mean like you you can help your client to raise from their ip like sabhi sach in hnm they have done like they have like he is earning from ip monetization right and then we have taxation part is there and then we have legal compliance part now legal compliance part i have also put in the uh, like brand setup also like the compliance part local level compliance without these compliances you can't run a fashion business so what are these compliances like you have to acquire a trade license right so you have to acquire a trade license to start any business in india or any other country so like you will also help them to like pick your a trade license to register their company to have a different type of uh, like permits that is required for a product line then we have uh, like brand expansion like web franchising and then merger and acquisitions may be there and then we have advertising and marketing issues international national issue, uh, like trade also you can help your client to advise them to starting their business in other countries or to expand their business in other country by advising them about the laws of their countries or might be possible like your country and that uh, proposed country like of your business uh, may have any mou with them so they they may have signed any mou or any treaty and then they may have uh, some benefits for fashion industry or fashion businesses so you can advise them for such schemes and for such agreement also and for of course for fundraising and then we have other type of issues in industry like after sales the first thing will be the consumer issues can be there like consumer complaint can be there about the bad quality of product or maybe delay in delivery and other type of issues can be there supply chain issues like your raw material provider is delaying or might be possible you have received a poor quality of raw material different from the one that they uh, like you have finalized then advertising and marketing issues can be there uh, then counterfeiting yes culture appropriation uh, labor and human rights issues can be there like of your workforce and then compensation like you have to help them in uh, giving compensation like wages and other things salaries and other and then contracts the other types of agreements like with the website designer like with the uh, like 
any other company, like for, for example, you are listing your product with any e-commerce store or maybe any third party store like offline store. So there will be an agreement also, right? So here, uh, the uh, work profile of a fashion lawyer is not limited to only IP or only the business part of it. So this is a, uh, like this lawyer has a broad skill set required. Now, there are new trends in fashion industry also. Now you can see there are uh, there is a, a much of discussion about the NFTs are there. So fashion designer also coming up with their NFTs, metaverse. So now there are new trends also. So now these uh, trends are new something like metaverse, NFTs, blockchain, AI in fashion. So various countries, so like majorly all these countries don't have any as such laws to govern them. But these countries are working on these laws. And then again, legal issues will be addressed. And of course, they will need a fashion lawyer or a lawyer that who are practicing in this field of areas. And like fashion lawyer will be the one who will understand them more closely because you are working directly with the fashion industry, right? So you can help your client about uh, these trends and law. So you can also start learning about this field, metaverse, blockchain, AI, and fashion. What is the role of this in the fashion industry and how it directly or indirectly affect the fashion industry. Now we have talked about the fashion businesses side only. But fashion law is not only limited to the signing side of a fashion. There are, again, there are different issues also, right? So we have uh, inclusively representation, diversity in fashion issues also, right? So we have rights of stakeholders, like rights of fashion models. He or she may be injured during a fashion work. Who will give them compensation? So sustainable and ethical fashion is there. There's a uh, like very important, uh, we can say there are various movements are going across. So there are uh, like sustainability and ethical fashion movement are also there. And then e-commerce and data privacy also there. Fast fashion brands are exploiting their workforces. So they also need a lawyer, right? So you can, uh, you, like, you can also expand your horizon. Like if you want to uh, work for the society also, you can also then again work as a fashion lawyer. So like work for the labor right, work for the human rights, work for the environmental right. Everything is there in the fashion law. So now we have talked about the uh, legal issues, work profile. So what skills do you require as a fashion lawyer? Firstly, knowledge of law relating to the industry. You should understand about this industry because these are your client. These are your target audience. You should understand about the them so how they work, what is their supply chain, what are the product line, right? Who are they? So you should know about them. You should know about, you should have a knowledge about the fashion apparel manufacturing process, the supply chain. Because like, uh, as I have discussed about the supply chain, there will be issue in the supply chain, right? So you should understand about the supply chain and manufacturing process also, just so very few. And then knowledge about the supply chain issues, and uh, like knowledge about the fashion councils. So there are various councils like in India's FDCA. So they have their own code of conduct. So you should understand about these code of conducts also. And then knowledge about fashion brands, very important. Because if you are entering into the field of fashion, you should have a knowledge about fashion brands, like top designers, fashion shows, fashion weeks, etc. Then knowledge about the government guidelines and schemes relating to this industry. Now, why this is important? because there are lots of schemes and lots of uh, like guidelines or the directions from the various ministries. Like for example, Ministry of Textile will be there. So they have a direction for the clothing industry. So you should advise your client so that they can comply with this direction. Or might be there are various schemes like maybe for like collected free loan or maybe any interest free loans are there. So you can help your client to avail them because there are lots of schemes available but they don't know about the documentation process. And you as a fashion lawyer, can help them draft uh, those documents and uh, you can avail those schemes on behalf of them, right? So now how you can add these skills? So firstly, understand about the laws applicable. Now you know about a work profile of a fashion lawyer. So now you also know that what will be the laws applicable. Like you uh, need to learn about IPR, you need to learn about the contracts, you need also need to have the uh, merger equation, you also need to have the taxation part, like uh, that much that, that is required. And then uh, you should also learn about the like labor laws, human rights laws, and the environmental laws guideline also there, right? And read about the judicial pronouncement, case studies of brand. Like, for example, 
why is rsl the most so the then again the evolution of louis vuitton so you can read their case studies right so understand about their case studies the rise and fall of the other different uh, like various brand then do research uh, read about the research and publication and also write something about like fashion law in this industry so have some publication in your profile and then attend events and networking not only limited to the fashion law so there are various very less event about the fashion law but there are events about the fashion industry right so you can go and visit any fashion week or fashion events and uh, try to connect with the like fashion designers over there try to understand about their problems try to also connect with the artisans what are their problems like what are the legal issues and try to solve them like try to uh, have uh, try to link it with the laws applicable right so you will understand about the linkage of the law and fashion industry then internship do some internship in this field a specialized course in fashion law again you can do uh, relating this industry now in internship like i have received so many question that uh, we don't find any law firms like which is specializing in the field of fashion law so how can we make uh, like how can we add experience to our cv so what you can do like now you know about the laws applicable right so you know about the contracts and agreement is there you know about corporate law is there for the compliance part now you know about the ipr also there so what you can do like you can have a different internship in these areas like you can do one internship in the corporate law uh, like for drafting and compliance you can do one in taxation you can do in one in labor and human rights law so like you can have a skill set attend from these different internship so that for example for example if i am a fashion owner brand owner and i need to hire a fashion lawyer so i will give preference to you, the one who is having all the skill set in their cv so it doesn't mean uh, that you only require a specific firm which is specializing in the field of fashion law i need the skill set i don't need a law firm right my main aim will be that you should have all these skill set in your profile so that you can help me so if you are only coming up with ip if you are only coming up with the contracts so you are not a suitable candidate for me but if you are coming up with ip plus contract and agreement and the corporate law so then yes yes you will be hired and you will be given a preference also so that is why we need a fashion lawyer right so fashion lawyer are only not limited to only one thing so they need the skill set that is required for a fashion brand owner so that is why you need to understand about this industry before going much in detail about the law part firstly start reading about the fashion industry who are these people who are these stakeholders what are their uh, legal issues how a fashion brand is uh, like set up so learn about the supply chain process learn about the supply chain process of a clothing industry of a cosmetic brand or maybe a jewelry or maybe a luxury brand right so when you learn more uh, in detail about these brands you will understand about the legal issues and how law is related to them and then attain the skill set another thing is about the academic option is there also and uh, yes so you can do course in uh, laws relating to fashion field so then again uh, like the one i told for you uh, like about the internship part like you can have a different courses so then again like there are uh, courses in fashion law as you can see there are courses like fashion law institute for the university milano fashion institute fashion law istanbul and then fashion law institute in spain we also have our fashion law courses in uh, like uh, by legal design and fashion law journal uh, but again if you go for this uh, like higher level courses like the, the masters courses so then again i have received uh, many question that these courses are very expensive so what how can we make a career in it if we don't and we also can't uh, like go, go to these countries to pursue these courses so then again what you can do like you can do different courses as uh, because you have to develop a skill set right so you can do a uh, one course in like contract drafting and agreement and then you can do one course in ipr then you can one course in like business management and fashion supply chain process so then you can make a skill set also there so then again so this is also a good option so the main thing is that you have to build a skill set in your cv now how you how can you make a career in the fashion field of fashion law so you can start as a in house counselor fashion brand uh, like you can apply to this position after attaining the skill set right not as a fresher so like after attaining the skill set and then firms lawyers specializing in field of fashion law so you can then again work with them or gather experience from different firms lawyers like who are working in field of ip corporate labor consumer right then build a skill set 
or also you can become an independent consultant and then you can also help start a fashion brand right so you can also become a fashion and uh, business consultant also you can help the individual start a brand to build their business to build their fashion brand to expand them so this is how you can make a career in it so these are some resources for you so you can read uh, various insights and articles on this website about the field of fashion law and yes so now again coming back to this question is fashion law for you so i hope now you have a, uh, an answer for this question and uh, like you will work on your skill set now if you want to really take up this career and so if you have any other questions so you can always connect with me so my email id is this anujdeetigulzai.com you can also connect with me on linkedin you can also connect with me on instagram my username is legally anuj and you can also subscribe to this channel and yes you can also visit our website fashionaljournal.com so we post a great content over there because we also know that there is a very uh, rare content about the field of fashion law and it is much required so we are creating content and we are regularly updating our website and also our instagram uh, handle also so like you can uh, visit our website and instagram handle and you can always connect with me on linkedin and also uh, to uh, my instagram so i hope uh, this uh, session will help you to make a career in fashion law and to have understanding about a field of fashion law okay thank you everyone